My name is Radhani Apiona. I'm presenting on different design of fuel systems for diesel engines. Yes, I'll be co covering the historic, historical, a little, a brief history on, on it. Then diesel engine fuel system design. Then I'll go to the conclusion. Historically, by 1890, Rudolf Diesel faced with the original the, the the person that designed the modern the, the classic um, diesel engine then faced a few challenges of selecting the right fuel. He had also a problem with designing engine that would reach high temperature and pressure compression. He actually designed the the engine to operate at 44 atmosphere, but he was unable to achieve more than 18% then, 18 atmosphere then, but he improved him for further designs. Controlling, he also had problem in controlling injection and timing, injection timing and mixing at the same time. Then at, then he thought any fuel would do, but the research then showed that fuel had, uh, the fuel at that, period, at that period had extreme sensitivity to all this very high pressure, then the, the need for them. Those are the challenges we faced then. Now, various kind of fuels are usable with the diesel engine. We have the automotive gas oil, AGO, that is the one we know as diesel, which is available in filling stations. It has, ha uh, it is a product of fractional distillation of crude oil. It has high energy density, about 10% more than premium motor spirit, that is petrol then it has a relatively high economy than PMS. Then crude palm oil is also usable with um, diesel engine. They research by Barry et al. in 2002. They rose the temperature of crude palm oil to about 92, 92 degrees centigrade. And they observed that it had no adverse effect on injection system. And they also observed that it had it lowered the engine friction. Then other fuel like vegetable oils are usable with diesel engine. Then fuel system design. We have two classes of fuel of uh, diesel, of the compression ignition engine, the diesel engine. That is the direct ignition and indirect ignition. In the direct ignition, the fuel is charged directly into the combustion chamber, whereas in the indirect, there's a pre-chamber like my other colleagues have shown. There's a pre-chamber where the fuel will first go then into the into the uh, combustion chamber. Then we have the in, in the, uh, the engine designs now. We have turbocharged or naturally aspirated. In the turbocharged, we have they use the exhaust gases to drive charges to drive air into the combustion chamber so that they can achieve higher higher pressure. But the naturally aspirated just take the conversion from directly from the atmosphere without any turbocharger use. Whereas turbocharging means using exhaust gases to drive a supercharger that will force gas into the conversion. Then fuel system design. We have this we have the distributor type injection system, we have the inline injection system and the common rail system. Now the Distributor type injection injection system. It requires a fuel injection pump. They use the fuel a uh, type pump. Injection pump requires solenoid pipe for meter charge into the injection uh, into the injection nozzle. They actually use uh, solenoid. Solenoids are electrical components that can be used to get to achieve that. Now the other other advantage of the use of solenoid is that it causes the intake ports when the ignition is off so that fuel does not perpetually go into the combustion chamber. Then pump action is achieved from roller tappets, roller tappets from the engine. Then the, this kind of induction system is used in light automobile. The inline injection system. The inline injection system uses inline injection pumps to lift the injection needle. The injection needle is that which would be that controls the metering of the fuel. Then each cylinder has a pumping element serving it. Then there are bar the, bar the barrels are built in with pumping elements. Barrels deliver fuel through a valve then to the cylinder. 
The pump action here is achieved. It's achieved on plunger from they use the camshaft, the cam follower, and spring motion. Those are the three. Those three are used in combination to achieve the pump action. Then to stop to stop fuel flow, there's a groove on the plunger aligned with the steel ports to block the barrel. That is the kind of design there. Then plunger rotation in sleeve are controlled by governors using rack and pinion mechanisms. This is a simple this is uh, an inline injection system. Okay, right. The common rail system. The common rail system is such that there will be a pump, there's a a particular a chamber <coughs> where the fuel the fuel is maintained at a, it, at a constant pressure, then it is controlled. You say we have common rail accumulator system, con consistent pressure, segments in larger applications, instead of having just a single common rail, we have them in segments. Then injections are electronically controlled. Then in this kind of system, we have more accurate and well controlled atomization. Then we can have multiple injections at some crank angles if for the top dead center or as the case may be. Then it can operate at very large pressure, greater than 1,600 bar. It can get up to 2,000 bars as well. Then the solenoid can use uh, the injection. The injectors actually can use the uh, solenoid control to meter bar, especially during the uh, cold starting. Then the common rail system. This is this is uh, this is a, a Volvo D5 common rail engine. This is this is the common rail system in practice. We have where the fuel will first be before going to into the uh, into the combustion chamber. Yeah. The conclusion. We have this engine can operate on wide on a wide variety of fuel, like as, as, as I mentioned earlier. Then fuel injection system has evolved over the years. We have used distributor system, we have used inline injection system, then to the very to the highly accurate and more and more reliable common rail system now. The common rail is found in mostly mostly in larger applications. Larger inline and distributor system are still in use in smaller engines because of the simplicity and cost. Some references. Thank you. Oh. Uh, we <coughs> appreciate your dynamic uh, graphics, uh, Akinola. A any questions for Akinola? Any questions? I have a very nice question. Why can't we use spectrum in this language? You have shown a lot of uh, uh, fields. Yes. Can you use spectrum? No. Why? The, the characteristic of uh, petrol is uh, a bit different. The, the kind of pressure we achieve in diesel engine is, so, is very high. Then if you use petrol at that kind of condition, it will cause, it will knock. Petrols cannot op uh, operate in that kind of uh, situation. It's highly volatile. Whereas this diesel is, the diesel engine is uh, such that it, it takes plenty of air. It actually operates on uh, lean pond, as, as in, it is not, petrol is, uh, a petrol engine is supposed to operate on you know, like, shall, I help, shall I give you a hand? Shall I help yes. you? Yes. Well, the reason you can't use petrol is because it doesn't auto-ignite easily. 